Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about dermatomyositis. If you haven't watched the overview video on inflammatory myopathies, please watch that first. Dermatomyositis is an autoimmune disease where you have inflammation of the skin causing unique skin rashes and inflammation of the muscle, which leads to muscle weakness. Dermatomyositis is an autoimmune disease where the body produces specific types of antibodies and the immune system attacks the muscle. To understand this autoimmune disease, we need to recap the anatomy of skeletal muscle tissue. This muscle tissue is made up of fascicles, which are made up of muscle units called muscle fibers. Each muscle fiber in turn are composed of myofibrils, which contain the functional unit of muscles called sarcomeres. Sarcomeres are what allow muscles to contract, thus allowing you to lift your arms above your head and climb upstairs. Let's focus on the pathophysiology now of dermatomyositis. The sequence of events that actually cause the immune system to cause inflammation of the muscle is not completely understood. However, there is likely an inappropriate activation of complement proteins targeting the perimysium, the layer surrounding a muscle fascicle. Let's take a closer look at a fascicle, which is surrounded by the perimysium. Here, you can also find blood vessels. The fascicle is made up of muscle fibers and myofibrils, as we have learned. The thought is that there are antibodies which accidentally mistake part of the muscle as foreign, possibly following an infection. Or there are dermatomyositis-specific antibodies that people have that target the muscle. The antibodies target the perimysium, including the blood vessels there. Once bound, the antibodies activate the complement system, which consists of specialized protein that promote the inflammatory response towards that target. Regardless of what antibodies initiates this whole process, what is seen as a result of complement activation is blood vessel inflammation and destruction around the fascicle that leads to ischemia and infarction to the muscle tissue, which then in turn leads to muscle inflammation and muscle atrophy. The specific term for these changes seen in the muscles of people with dermatomyositis is perifascicular inflammation with perifascicular atrophy. When muscles become inflamed and damaged, they start releasing enzymes and most importantly, creatinine kinase, as well as AST and ALT, usually known as liver enzymes, but are also found in muscle as well. And so with all this inflammation of the muscle as well as of the skin, dermatomyositis manifests with both muscular symptoms and skin signs. People present with gradual proximal symmetrical muscle weakness in the shoulders and in the hips. People often complain of weakness climbing up stairs or standing from a seated position. Dysphagia, dysphonia, and symptoms of aspiration indicate possible involvement of striated muscle of the pharynx and esophagus and are associated typically with poor prognosis. And so what are these cutaneous findings or skin changes? Well, the skin changes associated with dermatomyositis include pathognomonic findings such as heliotrope rash, which is periorbital erythema with edema, most often of the upper eyelids, Gottron's papules, pink fallacious papules overlying interphalangeal and metacarpophalangeal joints in the hands, Gottron's signs, which are red macules or patches over extensive surfaces of elbows, knuckles, knees, and ankles. Then you have other characteristic rashes, which include shawl sign and V sign, which are photosensitive. Holster sign across the thigh, and you also see nail fold changes, which includes subungal erythema and dilated capillary loops. 
amyopathic dermatomyositis is a condition where patients have characteristic dermatomyositis rash without muscle involvement. Again, amyopathic dermatomyositis means they have classic dermatomyositis rash, but without muscle weakness. Now, there are other clinical manifestations or signs and symptoms of dermatomyositis, but are only seen in those with certain dermatomyositis-specific antibodies. These antibodies can be measured in the blood and also help with the diagnosis. So what are the dermatomyositis-specific antibodies that potentially play a key role in the pathophysiology? Well, dermatomyositis-specific antibodies include anti-MI2, anti-small ubiquitin-like modifier activating enzyme, SAE, anti-TIF1 gamma, anti-NXP2, and anti-melanoma differentiation associated protein 5, or MDA5. There are some important things to know about these different antibodies. First of all, anti-ME2 is the most frequent seen in adults. Anti-TIF and NXP are associated with malignancy. TIF specifically is strongly associated with malignancy. MDA5 is associated with interstitial lung disease. Differential diagnosis to be aware about are other inflammatory myopathies, such as antisynthetase syndrome, which is a condition that can present with similar skin changes, but also associated with interstitial lung disease and mechanics hands. There's something called overlap myositis, which also presents with dermatomyositis skin changes, but is really associated with other rheumatological causes such as scleroderma and lupus. Here is an image of scleroderma hands called sclerodactyly. Inflammatory myopathy differentials that have no skin involvement include polymyositis, immune-mediated necrotizing myopathy, and inclusion body myositis. And here is a hand of a person with inclusion body myositis. Note muscle wasting of the hands. Other differential diagnoses include viral myopathy and thyroid-related myopathies amongst Mycenae gravis, for example, as well. Earlier in the pathophysiology section, we looked at some investigations that we could have already ordered in inflammatory myopathies, such as a creatinine kinase, AST, and ALT, which would both be elevated. The inflammatory markers CRP and ESR can be both elevated, and also importantly, ordering myositis panel to look for myositis-specific antibodies. An MRI of the muscle is important, and most specifically, a muscle biopsy, which is the gold standard for diagnosing and differentiating the different types. Muscle biopsy, as we have learned, will show perivesicular inflammation and atrophy. Another investigation is a skin biopsy, which can confirm features of dermatomyositis. Treatment of dermatomyositis is with glucocorticoids, and disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs can also be used, such as methotrexate or azathioprine, Intravenous immunoglobulins and other immunosuppressants such as rituximab and cyclophosphamide are also used. There is a risk of flares, which can again be treated with escalated doses of glucocorticoids. In summary, dermatomyositis is an autoimmune inflammatory myopathy characterized by presence of dermatomyositis-specific antibodies and muscle biopsy showing perifascicular inflammation. Treatment is with immunosuppressants.